This is the second video covering the reproductive system and this time we will focus on the female reproductive system. So the need to know structures for the female reproductive system are the ovaries, the oviduct, also known as the fallopian tubes, the uterus, also known as the womb, the cervix and the vagina. The function we'll be looking at is the production of the egg cells and their role in the fertilisation process. And all of these need to know structures will be found within the abdomen. Well, in the last video on the male reproductive system, we finished by talking about the sperm cells making it all the way to the fallopian tubes, the oviducts, and be able to fertilise the egg cell. Now we'll continue that story from the female reproductive system perspective. So the main cell of the female reproductive system are the ova, the eggs. These will be pre produced by the ovaries. They then have to be transported to the site of fertilization, the oviduct. Female reproductive system also provides that habitat, that environment for the development of fetus if fertilization does take place. It's also responsible for the menstrual cycle and the production of sex hormones. Here is a diagram of the female reproductive system. In, pause this video and identify the key structures. Answers are the ova cells, the egg cells, are the main cells of the female reproductive system. So these are produced and will mature within the ovary. So at puberty, females will have approximately 400,000 immature eggs within the ovaries, with one being released with each menstrual cycle. Typically, females will have between four and 500 cycles during their lifetime, with any remaining eggs dissolving. If we look at the ovary, we can see the ova developing as the primary follicle in diagram number one. These will continue to grow and to mature until we have this larger mature follicle. Eventually, this egg cell will be released during ovulation, point number four, where it will be released into the oviduct, where potentially fertilization can take place. What's left behind, however, in the ovary is now an empty follicle. The ova from inside has been released, but the follicle will remain for a short period of time and as a structure known as corpus luteum, which will eventually degrade if fertilisation does not take place and the menstrual cycle begins once more. Hormones that are involved in this process are follicle stimulating hormone, which comes from the pituitary gland. This travels to the ovary, which helps the egg to mature within this follicle. There's also estrogen, which is one of the hormones produced by the ovary itself. It's very important in terms of fertility, it helps in the production of breast tissue and maintaining a sex drive and lots of different features that are important for reproduction. Progesterone also made by the ovary. It's very important in terms of sustaining a pregnancy and maintaining the environment in the early days of a pregnancy by maintaining the line of the uterus for example. And we also have luteinizing hormone LH, which is the hormone responsible for actually triggering the release of the egg during ovulation. So 
if we look at the different structures, when the pituitary gland releases a surge of luteinizing hormone, this is the signal for ovulation to take place. So the mature ova, the mature egg that had developed inside the follicle within the ovary, will now leave the ovary and enter into the oviduct. So the oviduct is lined with cilia, these small hair-like structures, and these are responsible for moving that egg along down the oviduct, where it can potentially meet with a sperm cell in order for fertilisation to take place. If this were to happen, the uterus is where the fertilised egg will be implanted in the lining in the wall of the uterus, and the cervix plays a role in helping to protect that developing fetus, but also secretes the vaginal fluids. So the menstrual cycle is very important in terms of allowing reproduction and overseeing the different processes that take place within the female reproductive system. So the menstrual cycle is based on a 28-day cycle that is very normal for this to vary from individual to individual. If we start at day one to seven, day one of the menstrual cycle is the first day of the period and this is when the lining of the uterus has been shed as during the previous menstrual cycle fertilization did not take place therefore there's no point in maintaining the lining of the uterus thus it's discarded and the period begins so this will typically last for seven days after this seven day period, the blood flow should begin to ease, should stop, and then the reproductive system can begin preparing for the next round of the cycle. The potential for fertilization to take place once again, and thus the line of the uterus begins to be built up, as well as the egg beginning to mature within the ovary. Day 14, the halfway point, will be generally when that surge of LH takes place and thus the egg will be released out of the ovary and into the oviduct. From day 14 to 17, the egg can continue on its journey along the oviduct where it can potentially meet with the sperm cells and eventually make its way to the uterus. Day 18 to 28 will depend on whether the egg is fertilised or not. If not, the line of the uterus again is no longer required, so we begin to break down again. However, this cycle can be interrupted if fertilisation were to occur. So if either the cycle starts again, the period starts again as the uterus line is discarded, or the lining of the uterus is maintained because fertilisation is taking place and thus the egg has implanted within the uterus lining. So fertilisation would normally take place within the fallopian tube, within the oviduct. And then from there, travel through the rest of the oviduct of the implant in the uterus. It's at this point that the fertilised egg will begin to secrete another hormone, HCG. So during pregnancy, it's the only time this hormone will ever be secreted. And that is the basis for pregnancy tests. So the role of HCG is to maintain that corpus luteum that empty follicle within the ovary so that it continues to produce the hormone progesterone in order to maintain the pregnancy, to maintain the lining of the uterus within the first six weeks. After the six week period, the placenta should be fully developed and will begin to take over the role of producing progesterone. If you have any questions about the female reproductive system, 
you can leave those in the comment box below 